But first, as the debate continues over whether producing ethanol from corn is causing higher food prices, a new form of ethanol is about to move from the laboratory to the marketplace. It's called cellulosic ethanol, and it's made from plants that only microorganisms would want to eat. Rich Samuels reports on this next generation biofuel in our ongoing Chicago Matters series, Growing Forward. It's harvest time for the corn crop of Illinois. The yield this year will be an estimated two and a quarter billion bushels. Only Iowa will produce more. 30% of this year's crop will be converted into ethanol. Ethanol plants are crucial to the corn farmer of Illinois. The productivity and increase of, of corn exports, uh, of corn being utilized for livestock, corn being utilized for other feedstuffs are not keeping pace with corn productivity. So if we don't, in, if we don't have other uses of corn, like ethanol or biofuels, uh, we, we are overproducing corn and thus the economic viability of Illinois farm, or fam, or farm families will go down. Illinois will produce more than 7 billion gallons of ethanol from corn this year, and according to a recent study, Manufacturing ethanol from corn creates 40% fewer greenhouse gases than refining gasoline. The reasons it's so much better are, you know, 196 bushels per acre uh, corn yield in our geography, which is where, you know, the rest of the world is, the rest of the country is aspiring to get by 2015. No irrigation uh, used for any of that corn production. Fewer trips through the farm uh, because of the adoption of technologies that minimize the number of trips. And then um, the very efficient use of uh, the natural resources, natural gas, electricity, and water in the actual conversion of that corn to ethanol. But even as this year's corn falls to the combine, researchers believe new crops could be even better sources of ethanol. These are not food crops, they are energy crops and they are used to make what is called cellulosic ethanol. Cellulose is the major constituent of a plant's mass. It, and not just the starch containing grain, can be converted to ethanol, though it's a more difficult process than the conventional way. But on the other hand, cellulose is very abundant, so essentially any plant is a potential source of cellulose. At the Energy Biosciences Institute at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, Stephen Long and his researchers, with funding from BP, are trying to determine which plants are best suited for cellulosic ethanol. And one of the most promising groups are the perennial grasses. So rather like a prairie grass, these, these grow up each year, and then in the fall, they, they die back, they move their nutrients back into the root system, but the cellulose stays above ground, so the farmer can then cut that in the early winter, bale it, and that could be used for making cellulosic ethanol. Switchgrass is one of the perennials the U of I is testing. It is thought uh, uh, by a lot of uh, researchers to, to have great potential as a biomass crop because it does grow in a lot of different environments. But miscanthus, an exotic perennial of Asian origin, seems to have even greater potential. The dry biomass yields per acre seem to be, uh, we're, in our plot work, in our research work, we're getting uh, uh, at least twice as much per acre as we would with uh, switchgrass. The miscanthus on the farm of John Caveney in Piet County stands 12 feet tall. We're looking at it here in Illinois as a basically a new crop for the Midwest. Uh, we've been involved with this since 2002, and um, uh, we found it to be uh, you know, a pretty reliable plant at this point in time. John Caveney, perhaps best known for the bourbon red turkey he raises, has become one of the most ardent advocates of miscanthus. We got started basically in 2002. You know, my daughter, Emily Heaton, uh, went to the U of I with the idea that she wanted to save the world by growing grass. I thought it was a pretty good idea. And she developed the miscanthus program at the U of I as part of her graduate uh, 
work and at the same time I had the opportunity to start on-farm research at the same time the university started their research program. There's several real advantages to miscanthus over corn as a source of, of, uh, of fuel stocks for an energy. Uh, for energy. Uh, one is, you know, corn is an annual crop, which means it has to be planted every year. It takes quite a bit of fertilizer. It takes quite a bit of herbicides. Uh, and it's a relatively short-lived uh, crop. On the other hand, miscanthus um, is a perennial crop, which means you harvest, you plant it once and harvest it annually. In the case of miscanthus gigantus, uh, we believe it's going to live at least 20 years and probably closer to 30 or 40 years. Meanwhile, in West Suburban Warrenville, Coscata, which bills itself as a biology-based renewable energy company, is making ethanol in a new way. What's different about our process is that we don't start with any food-based materials like corn. Uh, we start with uh, a variety of other feedstocks that are carbon-containing. It could be uh, biomass, such as wood, uh, agricultural waste, uh, purpose-grown energy crops or even the carbon containing components of municipal solid waste or old tires. Bill Rowe believes that to meet the nation's transportation fuel needs you have to look beyond corn-based ethanol. We believe that that uh, for most parts of the world taking food out of the food chain and plugging it into the energy chain is a non-starter. Uh, give you an example uh, here in the U.S., we require over 150 billion gallons of transportation fuel each year. Corn ethanol at its maximum uh, can produce on the order of about 15 billion gallons or 10 percent. Whereas if we widen the scope of, of uh, feedstocks to include all of these other either biomass feedstocks or waste materials, we can produce a lot more fuel. Uh, and not be restrained by the food question. In the Coscata process, the biomass is first converted to a gassy mixture of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen. Proprietary microorganisms, through a process called biofermentation, then convert the gas into ethanol. And if manufacturing ethanol from corn reduces greenhouse gas emissions 40% compared to gasoline, the Coscata process cuts them even more dramatically. In, in Coscata's case, there is up to a 96% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions relative to that of gasoline. Uh, the team at Coscata is extremely excited about this partnership and what it's going Early to Early in 2008, to General Motors bought a stake in Coscata, which is presently building a uh, pilot plant in Pennsylvania that will be up and running General next Motors April. Meanwhile, please welcome Governor Phil Bredesen. The state of Tennessee is partnering with an Itasca-based division of DuPont on its own pilot project to make ethanol from corn cobs, corn fiber, and switchgrass. This is really where the future is in ethanol, and uh, I'm really proud of Tennessee. I think we've really stepped forward on this one and uh, really making some waves around the country. But will the new bio crops replace the old? If I'm in central Illinois where I can grow corn better than anybody else in the world, and the infrastructure is already in place, and that corn is needed in addition to being used for ethanol for other purposes, uh, food and feed, corn is going to make a lot of sense long term. What you'll see with those energy crops is they'll be used on more, produced on more marginal acres. They're not, you're not going to see uh, Miscanthus produced in DeKalb County, Illinois, or McLean County, Illinois. Those are going to be corn and soybean production areas. But as this year's harvest comes to a close, there's a warning about seasons to come from a researcher who spent two decades studying global climate change. I firmly believe that in three or four years, as, m as important as it is to the nation to have energy security, it's going to much be much more important that we actually have we have, we have fuels which are not impacting our climate because you know if, if you look at the road we're going down for example you mentioned at the beginning the corn we grow here in central illinois in the second half of this century the climate will have changed so much that we won't be able to grow corn here anymore so this is a, something we need to be addressing today for Chicago Tonight, this is Rich Samuels.